formal session of Virginia Beach City Council to order. Uh, our invocation this evening is by the Reverend Ken Christian, Jr., pastor of the New Life Presbyterian Church. I ask you all to stand and re after the invocation, remain standing uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. It's you. <laughs> Father Jim Park. Thank you. Lord God, once again, we come before you asking for your wisdom and insights. For in mysterious ways, you call us to be brothers and sisters to one another. And as we look at the work of our council and the city of Virginia Beach, you challenge us to continue to discover even better ways to be faithful to the lives of every one of our citizens. Be with us this night, we pray in his name. Amen. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll be back. Thank you, Father. <laughs> May I have a motion to certify the closed session? So moved. Second. Vote is open. By a vote of eight to zero, you have certified the closed session to be in accordance with the motion to recess. Thank you. And may I have a motion to approve the informal and formal session minutes of October the 2nd? So moved. Second. Any additions or deletions? If not, the vote is open. Ms. Kane. I wasn't here. Thank you. By a vote of 8 to 0, with Ms. Kane and Ms. Wilson both abstaining, <coughs> we approve the minutes as submitted. All right. We have a couple of presentations tonight. The first one is the uh, extra mile day, and I'd ask Father Park to come forward if he would. Thank you, Mayor. Go ahead. The proclamation reads, whereas the city of Virginia Beach is a community which acknowledges that a special vibrancy exists within the entire community when its individual citizens collectively go the extra mile in personal effort, volunteerism, and service, and whereas Virginia Beach is a community which encourages its citizens to maximize their personal contributions to the community by giving of themselves wholeheartedly and with total effort, commitment, and conviction to their individual ambitions, family, friends, and community. And whereas Virginia Beach is a community which chooses to shine a light on, on and celebrate individuals and organizations within its community who go the extra mile in order to make a difference and, get, and lift up fellow members of their community. And whereas Virginia Beach acknowledges the mission of Extra Mile America to create 575 extra mile cities in America and is proud to support the Extra Mile Day on November 1, 200, 2017. Now, therefore, I, Lewis R. Jones, Mayor of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia, do hereby proclaim October 16, 2018, Extra Mile Day in Virginia Beach, and as I urge each individual in the community to take time on this day to not only go the extra mile in his or her own life, but to also acknowledge all those who are inspirational in their efforts and commitment to make their organizations, families, community, country, or world a better place, and witness whereof I have here and to set my hand and cause the official seal of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia, to be affixed the 16th day of October, 2018. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this proclamation, first of all, I want to thank you uh, for the proclamation. Uh, this proclamation is one more way of recognizing that our city can pride itself not only on its safety, not only on its economic development, not only on its excellent schools, but also on the men and women who are truly heroes as our volunteers. They are heroes not only in the sense of responding to emergencies and saving lives, 
but also in the daily work that offers key support to our libraries, our parks and rec facilities and programs, our new homeless resource center, our communications department, our aquarium, our agricultural programs, as well as our public works and utilities. But also, in so many ways, our real heroes are the volunteer resource managers who enable and support and appreciate our volunteers. They're so key and we are thankful for them. Also this year, our resource office has established a key to those volunteer groups who come to us in times of disaster, such as in Hurricane uh, Matthew, and such as Rubicon, United Methodist Corps, Operation Blessing. It allows us to work closely with VOAD, the volunteer organizations active in disaster. So thank you for the proclamation. Thank you to our almost 15,000 volunteers. Thank you. Our next proclamation is uh, for the Native American Heritage, Heritage Month. And I understand Chief Lee Alakami of the Nansmont Indian Tribe is here. Welcome, Chief. This proclamation reads, whereas Native Americans have made use of the natural resources in Virginia and Virginia Beach for over 15,000 years, and whereas Native Americans <coughs> prospered in Virginia as hunters and gatherers for thousands of years living in bands and in encampments, and whereas Native Americans developed tribal relationships and settled in hamlets and villages, and whereas the Chesapeake Indian tribe resided in a village in Virginia Beach at the time of our uh, of or just prior to the early 17th century settlement of the region by England and whereas <laughs> members of the Nansmont Indian tribe moved eastward settling in areas that included Virginia Beach and whereas an Indian reservation in the Pongo area of Virginia Beach was occupied by Nansmont Indians in the late 17th century, and whereas the Commonwealth of Virginia officially recognized the Nansmont Indian tribe in 1985, and whereas the United States of America officially recognized the Nansmont Indian tribe in 2018, and whereas members of the Nansmont Indian tribe play an essential role in the Virginia Beach community today. And whereas Chief Lee Lockamy is a resident of the city of Virginia Beach, and whereas November was first declared as Native American Heritage Month in the United States of America in 1990, and whereas November is also commemorated as Native American Heritage Month in the Commonwealth of Virginia, now therefore I, Lewis R. Jones, Mayor of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia, to hereby proclaim November 2018 Native American Heritage Month in Virginia Beach, and further call upon the citizens, government, agencies, public and <coughs> private institutions, businesses and schools in Virginia Beach to recognize the contributions of Native Americans to the history and development of the city, state and nation, and to commemorate this month with appropriate activities and testimony whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the official seal of the City of Virginia Beach, Virginia to be affixed the 16th day of October, 2018. Chief? Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'd like to say that the Chief is one of our wonderful members on the Historic Preservation Commission. Right. He's done a great job. Thank you for your services, sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> All right. We'll now have a public hearing on the Southeastern Public Service Authority of Virginia uh, amended and restated articles of incorporation. Do we have any speakers? There are no speakers, sir. Thank you. We'll now go to the consent agenda. Vice Mayor Wood. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I move for approval under the consent agenda under ordinances resolutions, item J1, 
Resolution to approve and adopt the amended and restated Articles of Incorporation regarding Southeastern Public Service Authority of Virginia, SIPSA. <laughs> Item J3, resolution to move and reschedule the November 6, 2018 regular meeting of the City Council to November 13, 2018 with time and location to remain the same. Item J5, resolution to support the City's 2018 application to the Virginia Department of Transportation, CDOT, regarding bicycle and pedestrian safety program at Pacific Avenue between 5th and 40th Streets. J6, ordinance to amend City Code Section 8-70 regarding composition of the Local Board of Building Code Appeals Electrical Division. J7, ordinance to authorize temporary encroachments into a portion of city property known as West Neck Road, Backgate Drive, and Ten Barn Way, located adjacent to the subdivision of Kingston Estates regarding construction and maintenance of two entry wing walls. Item 8, J8, uh, ordinance to accept and appropriate from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, A, $33,750 in grant funds to the FY 2018-19 Police Department Operating Budget regarding Marine Patrol Dive Equipment, 8B, $1,323,990 in grant funds to the FY 2018-19 Fire Department Operating Budget regarding continued operation of the Virginia Task Force 2 <coughs> Urban Search and Rescue Team. Item 9, ordinance to accept and appropriate A, $15,550 in lieu of park reservation from the Trotter Court Subdivision to the Parks Special Use Facility Development and Renovations 3 CIP. Item 9B, $46,128.75 in donations from the Friends of Virginia Beach Public Libraries to the FY 2018-19 Department of Public Libraries Operating Budget. Now to declare a public hearing on planning. Under planning item K1, Kyle W. and Bailey B. Fett for a variance to section 4.4B of the subdivision regulations regarding lot width at 633 Princess Anne Road, District 7, Princess Anne. Item K2, Princess Anne Meadows LLC, William and James Snowden for conditional change of zoning from AG1 Agricultural to conditional R10 Residential and modification of proffers at the 2800-2900 block of Princess Anne Road, dated September 22, 2015, District 7, Princess Anne. Item K3, Greer Han Enterprises Incorporated, Pools Dockside LLC for modification of conditions regarding a commercial marina at 3311 Shore Drive, approved April 22, 1974, District 5, Lynn Haven. Item 4, Crespo Enterprises, Inc. doing business as Roadrunner Towing and AC Enterprises, Inc. doing business as Logan's Towing, 5312 Virginia Beach Boulevard, LLC for a conditional use permit regarding a bulk storage yard at 5312 Virginia Beach Boulevard, District 2, Kempsville, noting that that is with modified condition 1A as discussed in the workshop. Item 5, Nofisat, Teo, and Bolu Jones Coma Lafe for a conditional use permit regarding family daycare home at 1961 Arlington Arch Drive, District 1 in Centerville. Item 6, Mavis Bahado Singh and Nicholas Grady for a conditional use permit regarding a family daycare at 1605 Cliffwood Drive in the Rose Hall District. Item 7, Jasmine Gold Cruise Living Trust for a conditional use permit regarding a family daycare home at 4440 Pissarro Drive, District 3 Rose Hall. Item 8, Anderson's Virginia Beach LLC, AGI VB Holdings LLC for a conditional use permit regarding outdoor recreational <coughs> facility at 1925 Fisher Arch, District 7, Princess Sam. <coughs> Item 9, Mary Bozard, Thomas Lee Bozard for a conditional use permit regarding a residential kennel at 2880 Indian River Road, District 7, Princess Sam. Item 10, the Edge Sports LLC, Fairfield TIC LLC, BCP TIC LLC, DMF TIC LLC, GCK TIC LLC for a conditional use permit regarding indoor recreation facility at 5258A Fairfield Shopping Center, District 3, Kempsville. Item 11, ordinance to adopt and incorporate into the Virginia Beach Comprehensive Plan the Burton Station Strategic Growth Area Master Plan 2018, which will supersede the Burton Station Strategic Growth Area Master Plan 2009 and amend the executive summary sections 1.2 urban areas in chapter 3 plan implementation and agenda for future action of the comprehensive plan 2016 pertaining to the Burton Station strategic growth area plan. So moved, Mr. Mayor. 
Is there a second? Second. Motion's been made and second. Vote is open. By a vote of 10 to 0, you have approved the consent agenda as read by Vice Mayor. <clears throat> All right. Uh, we'll now go to ordinances and resolutions, but I would like to remind everyone that the City Council speaker policy that allows certain representatives of groups to speak for 10 minutes applies only to planning items and items where a public hearing is required by state law. As to all other items on the agenda, each speaker, whether speaking individually or on behalf of a group, will have three minutes to speak. Also, when speakers are called on, on each, each item, the clerk will call for those individuals who have signed up to speak. After those who have signed up to speak have spoken, the chair will ask if there are any other persons who wish to speak on the item at hand. Those speakers will be, be allowed to speak and will be asked to give their name, address, and telephone number for the clerk to record. We'll now go to item J2, which is a resolution to adopt the city's 2019 <coughs> legislative agenda. Danny Lee Ginn. And after Mr. Ginn will be Gary McCollum. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. My name is Danny Lee Ginn. Uh, I own property at 1945 Pleasant Ridge Road for the last 30 years that I paid taxes to the city. But my permanent residence is 3844 Dare Circle in Norfolk, Virginia. My phone number is 857-4501. I've come here tonight because I picked up the paper and to my horror I read uh, that uh, the city of Virginia Beach was con considering switching over to a ward system and as an individual who has lived under the ward system for the last 40 years I came hopefully to give you some information and in making your decision. In the article it <coughs> stated that the at-large system uh, uh, discouraged competition. Uh, that is not true. Uh, at the large system uh, enables the citizens of Virginia Beach to choose all the representatives and vote for all the representatives who sit at this table and make the decision. Under the ward system on which we live in Norfolk, uh, I am allowed to choose only one individual out of seven. So therefore, I have a voice of only one individual that I can pick that will represent me but if the other council members are doing something that is uh, not advantageous to the city uh, or I like, I have no say in what they do. So it, the ward system is a much more non-competitive system. Secondly, the article uh, indicated uh, that the uh, large system uh, uh, was an advantage to the wealthy uh, and to the special interest. Again, that is not true because the wealthy and the special interests are going to have to influ influence all of you because the people vote for all of you. And therefore, they have a, a much harder uh, position in influencing your government. In the ward system, all they have to do is pick out a particular ward that they want to influence, pour a lot of money, a lot of interest, a vote one individual who will swing the vote in their favor and therefore they have much more control. <coughs> so your system is a much more open system uh, than the ward system. The third point in the article is that the at-large system was a disadvantage to the minority. Um, I would disagree compared to the ward system. In the ward system in Norfolk, uh, the uh, minorities are kind of limited to three representatives and have been sold this. Uh, that they can have three representatives. Yet in the city of Virginia Beach, the minorities have the right to run in any ward uh, and put up a candidate uh, throughout the city if they choose to do so. Uh, in Norfolk, uh, that is not particularly the case. So those three points uh, you know, are not really valid. The second point I want to make is that once you go into a ward system, your mentality will change. Uh, you will begin to th stop thinking about what is good for the compass of the city 
and you'll begin to think about what is good for the ward. An example of this is I attended the informal meeting uh, in Norfolk City Council. Tommy Smeagle, one of the representatives, made the statement that he was more concerned about what he could do for his ward than what he could do for the city of Norfolk. Your time is up. Sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it and ask you not uh, to go to the ward system. Thank you. Gary McCollum, and after Mr. McCollum will be Marlena Castaluza. Gary McCollum, 3901 Meeting House Road, <coughs> husband of Cookie, father of Ruth. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council Members, I, I also stand uh, in opposition. I believe that there might be an amendment uh, to uh, modify the, um, the current way that we vote. And I stand in opposition to that amendment if it goes forward, not for the same reasons that the previous speaker uh, mentioned, because I do believe that the current system that we have uh, does disenfranchise minorities. I also believe it disenfranchise, uh, disenfranchises others uh, frankly, who don't have uh, wealthy contacts, uh, business interests, and others. Uh, and I think that's why we need to make a change, but making a change to what I believe I've heard, which would be a seven district, four at large system, does not solve the problem. Uh, there are a number of ways that this could be changed and could be improved. You could go to an all district uh, voting system with an at large mayor, which some cities have used, stack ranking. Uh, there's a lot of study been done on stack ranking voting and how that actually changes uh, and levels the playing field for candidates. The bottom line is that the current system that we have today, it's not working. And it's not just uh, the fact that we don't have minority representation on the council. It's not working because we're not treating every part of the city the same way. There are issues that happen in certain neighborhoods problems, issues that, that don't happen in certain uh, other parts of the city. There are certain parts of the city that get uh, more attention uh, than other parts of the city. And so I do think there needs to be a change. You are aware that there are legal challenges being, uh, being undertaken as we speak around the current system. And I would just hope that, uh, that members of this council will look at this, look at this as an opportunity to make a change so that uh, all of the citizens, all of the citizens, not just some, but all of the citizens are fairly represented. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Marlena Castelluza. Good evening, Mayor Jones. My name is Marlena Castelluzzo, Chair of Virginia Beach Taxpayer Alliance. And on behalf of our board and membership, I'm here to express our support of a legislative agenda proposal put forth by Councilman, Councilwoman Abbott and Councilman Moss. Both are trustworthy, ethical members of this body and have proven themselves to be staunch advocates of the citizens of Virginia Beach. Unlike some members of City Council, they can be dependent upon to hold to their commitments and once given their word, will adhere to their obligations. Moss and Abbott have, along with City Councilman Dr. Bobby Dyer, not feared facing a room of retired school board members, former political officials, military officers, educators, businessmen and women, an overall extremely well-educated, highly informed group of tax-paying citizens. Actor, acting Mayor Jones and City Councilwoman Henley have participated in VBTA forums as well, and they're still alive to tell about it. But it would be easy to see why a less knowledgeable and unskilled city council member would dread facing such an audience. It's illuminating to have experienced it firsthand. Unlike authors of this proposal who present a principled position to benefit Virginia Beach citizens, our organization is anticipating, given Mr. Davenport's history of duplicity and insecure behaviors, he'll oppose this legislative agenda and perhaps put forth a Bruce Thompson or other developer authorized proposal as a substitute motion. And unlike the first gentleman who spoke, it is very apparent in anyone who has lived in this city for any length of time when the former mayor needed to raise $700,000 for a $30,000 a year job, and we have a candidate now who's raising over $200,000 with $100,000 committed to television, we are not in a system that is fair, that gives every citizen the right to access to their councilman. We sincerely entreat you to make the right and correct vote and vote the ethical way for the Moss and Abbott legislative agenda proposal. Thank you. That's all the speakers, sir. All right. May I have a motion? 
Motion to approve. I was very asked, are we doing I mean, all are we of going it? To, I mean, there's a lot of items in which the agenda, how are we going to? I have a suggestion, Mr. Mayor, if I could. Yes, you may. I'm, I know we're trying to get to what everyone agrees to first and then vote on the things that there's dissent on. So I thought a good way might go, because it'll be quick, is the mayor could say, number one, and, you know, we could just raise our hand, he could see if there's object, someone's going to vote no, then we just don't vote on that separately. And we could quickly, you know, efficiently get through this and allow the people, because I know there's some things I'm not going to vote for, and there's some vice versa. I think that would work, Mr. Mayor. I would recommend that. All right. And then motion based on that. And the consent agenda would be on those items for which there was no objection, and then we vote on the balance individually. I don't know any other way to get there. Do you have a suggestion? I don't think. I have no objection to that, Ms. Clerk. Is that something, Madam Clerk, is that something that you can accommodate? Uh, what I just. Yes. But I yes. would anticipate that the motion would say, this is the motion to approve items one, three, doot, 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 and then they would be done, and then we'd go back in order of the ones not picked and vote individually. Well, it's just the last four, correct? Uh, no. We'll do five at a time? Why don't we do one at a time and whatever passes, passes. Uh, I can do that, too. <laughs> All right. Well, why not just say... Other up, up to the first 19 who opposes some of these. What are the ones that you want That's what pulled? I would say. Let's do, let's Let's do, do it that way. way. Yeah. 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 Number With three. The, number three. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else have one? No. I'm talking about the first 19, is that right? And the last four. Mm -hmm. But I mean to approve the first 19. No, he wants to pull. Uh, John wants to pull item three. Correct. Is that right, John? Correct. And uh, do you want to just vote no against, or do you want to pull? I want to pull because I want to discuss it. Okay. But thank you All for right. asking. And are there others that want to want to pull other parts? Up to 19, one through 19. I'm sorry. We're just talking about one through 19, correct? Just talking about all of them. Which <laughs> which others do you want to pull? The last. Oh. Can I ask, uh, there is one other one I would like to pull, if I, no, I'm sorry, I should have paid attention to it, the internet sales tax. Which number is That's that? That's item uh, 10. And I apologize. All right. <clears throat> How about we do this? I'm going to go down the list, and, and if somebody wants an item pulled, we'll pull it, and then we'll... Well, we the rest of we just did this. We just did this. Yeah. Can, well, can I make a Except motion? The last four. Can I make a motion to approve uh, items uh, on the agenda uh, one through 19 with the exception of three and 10? Is that? Yeah, that's no second. Like, I'll make that motion, please. Everybody <coughs> ready for that? Yep. All right. The motion's been made. Is there a second? A second. Uh, can, can, second. Can, well, can I just clarify this? Um, so we're, we're dividing the question, so we're not just saying we're voting on these and we're, we're defeating the others, correct? We're just voting on these and then we're, we're not. Yeah, but I don't want to be in a position where where we've taken 3 and 10 completely out. Right. We're going to go back. Right. I'm, 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 my motion is to vote affirmatively for items 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. If that clarifies my motion, yeah. But but my question is, does that does that automatically defeat items three, ten, twenty? No, no, no. Them. I, I don't know. I mean, if we no. we have to divide it. I think it doesn't defeat no. twenty, twenty one, and twenty two, and twenty three either. <clears throat> you have one resolution that says that the city's delegation to the general assembly is requested to sponsor and or support legislation in the 2019 session of the General Assembly that would carry out the goals and objectives of the city as set forth in its legislative agenda, which is the attached document. You're going to have to include or remove from that attached document uh, uh, items that are currently printed in it. Rather than, rather than, one way you could do it is to have a motion to exclude each item that somebody wishes to exclude. You could vote it up and down and then have a master motion to approve the resolution with the items left in. And that way you could still debate all of them as you go through. 
but but you are going to have to have a, a, a you know we can rewrite this resolution for you but 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 the resolution is going to have to be rewritten if you're doing it in three separate motions all right how about we do uh, can i get you to withdraw your motion for, uh, yes sir so. <laughs> withdraw all right uh, i think we're in charge you can say well, what no, you can want. you can you can do it however you want to do it Correct. but but we will have to rewrite the just tell us how to rewrite the resolution then and we'll do it the um Second. I'd like a motion to approve the legislative agenda uh, or, or to, to s separate uh, for individual vote items 3, 10, 20, 21, 22, and 23 from the, from the legislative agenda. I would make that motion, sir. I'll second it. Thank you. Any discussion and he's, on and that? And he's motion? withdrawing his prior motion, no, correct? He did. I did withdraw yes. it. Right. Very good. Yeah. All right. Motion. Vote's open. So by, by a vote of 10 to 0, can you close that? You have approved the motion to separate items 3, 10, 20, 21, 22, and 23 from the legislative agenda. Thank you. All right. Now we'll go to voting rights, item 3. Yes. The Any reason discussion? There is. I could, Mr. Mayor. I have to approve it first. Yes. Do you have a discussion before the motion or? Yeah, I'm waiting for you to give your discussion, yeah. Well, I, I thought you usually have a motion first. But well, here's my reason. It's the same reason as for the constitutional amendment for a term limits, because it's the same reasoning, so I won't repeat it twice. Uh, I applaud independent commissions, but deciding how the General Assembly and how Congress should be elected is not the responsibility of this body, number one. That's why I'm not voting for it. It's not our job. And number two, the same thing with term limits, deciding what is or should not be a constitutional amendment, since it doesn't just apply uniquely to Virginia Beach, is also not within the purview and the jurisdiction of this body. So why are we recommending to our superior body how they should manage their affairs when we often complain when they try to micromanage our own? We might invite more micromanagement than we want. So I just think we should stick to the things that we have direct equities that are unique to the city of Virginia Beach. And so it's on that basis that I'm voting no on both voting rights and on the term limits, and not on the merits of the issue, but on the proper jurisdiction of this body to opine on it. All right. All right. May I have a motion on item three? I make a motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve. Any further discussion? Vote is open. By a vote of nine to one, with Mr. Moss voting no, you have approved the legislative item for voting rights in the legislative package. Now we'll go to item 10, which is the state of Virginia enacted enabling legislation for sales tax on all internet sales. We have any discussion on that? Well, I did, and I, I think the, I think that's something we need to do, but this is the comment that I made before because we're asking for money in a lot of other categories, we're asking for money. You may recall this conversation. This says K through 12. But we have other areas we're ask, always asking money for too. So what is the direction? Because there's, there's more requests in here than there is money. So when it comes down to the time for the asking our legislative liaison and lobbyists in Richmond, the General Assembly says there's X bucks and you're asking for this, or you're asking for something back here, what is the priority of this request of K through 12? Is that superior to all other requests? Because everybody's trying to spend that same half billion dollars, and I know that you can only spend it once. So my concern is what is the priority? Is this our top priority? So when, when Senator Steff or Frank Wagner go and ask Bob Mathias, well, this is what you got you're asking us for. What's your highest priority? What do you want from us? Would you rather have K through 12 or do you rather have some of these other things? What is it? And that's, that's what I'm trying to be after is for us to clarify for the staff, what's the priority of this over all other money <coughs> requests? Is this our top priority? I think it should be, but is it? And that's what I'm really asking. Do you have a comment, Mr. Hamm? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Moss, members of council, uh, we have many number one priorities in the city of Virginia Beach. 
but we pride ourselves as being a financially stable and best managed city. And we do that by having a good balance when we go about distributing the public's money. Uh, our school system is a top ranked school system in the United States, but its current infrastructure redevelopment program is not unlike some of the other programs that we've tackled, like drugging, <coughs> uh, where we had no program and it's hundreds of years to, to, to make headway associated with it. And the opportunity uh, by Supreme Court decision to fairly tax uh, goods, and, goods provided through the Internet provides a, a windfall to the, to the Commonwealth of Virginia. And the opportunity for us to make known to our delegation and to the legislators in Richmond that the need to improve their investment in education, both in school teacher pay and in con contributions to the construction and redevelopment of our school facilities uh, will go, go a long way to ensuring that the Commonwealth of Virginia remains a most and best educated state uh, in the Union. So I would hope that the City Council would follow through with this recommendation so that you're giving guidance to your elected officials in Richmond uh, where they might put their money. If I could, Mr. Mayor, I just want to read the last sentence of this request. So I think that my answer is that it is our number one priority, all this worse is because it goes on to read, and I quote, quote, any new revenue derived from the expansion of taxing internet sales should be reserved for K through 12, especially increasing average teacher compensation and school board construction. So my constructive interpretation of that would be if I was Bob Mathias and we passed this and the General Assembly says, hey, we only have so much money, where would you want to put it? That our answer would be that if it comes from this internet sales source, that our number one priority is schools. And that's all I'm trying to make sure that there is, that what we think we voted and said is what Mr. Mathias and our lobbyists would understand and that would be the message that's communicated and you affirm that that is true. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Ms. This is more of a question for Mark and a, and a general statement. I think I should abstain from this as I recently have acquired interest in a business that deals with online sales. And I apologize for not getting that to you till then. So I'm, I'm going to abstain on this one due to my interest. Fine, thank you. Well, I sponsored this because uh, I... Uh, I believe that uh, with the amount of internet sales that are taking place uh, and, that, and the impact that the loss of tax revenue that the, that the uh, city and the state are, are, receive, are not receiving as a result of that is having a serious impact on the ability of the state to send us the kind of funding that we need for our schools and for that reason i believe it's something we ought to do and ask them to do and uh because uh, otherwise <coughs> the local taxpayers of virginia beach are going to have to make up the difference i would just mayor I'm just and sure so that's why i sponsor it and i believe it's the right thing to do may i have a motion Can I mix? yes I'd also like to say something. I've, I've been hearing about this for, for a long time, not just now, but there's, there's another facet to this. This was also called the Main Street tax because all of our Main Street storefronts and businesses were being hurt by the online sales because someone could go into Walmart and look at a baseball bat and then go online and say, well, I can get that baseball bat online and not have to pay the sales tax. So they could take it and swing it and try it out and utilize the store and then go and right there order it from someone else. And so this also helps our storefronts, our local storefronts and businesses. So yes, it's nice to get the revenue, but it's also going to help businesses and a lot of small businesses. So there, there's 
I just wanted to bring up that other facet to this. It's also called the Main Street. You want to make sales. a motion? I move to approve. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? The vote is open. By a vote of nine to zero of Ms. Abbott abstaining, you have approved item J210 to enable legislation for sales tax on internet sales to be included in the legislative package. All right, now we'll go to item 20, uh, which is a city charter limitation on the issuance of public facility revenue bonds and other efforts to circumvent the city charter debt provisions. Here we have discussion. Well, I'm going to move for its adoption, and after, if there's a second, then we'll have discussion. Second. All right. Motion made and a second. Uh, we'll now go to discussion. Yes, Mr. This is an amendment I propose. Oh, okay, let's let oh, go. I'm sorry. Mr. No, Dyer, go right ahead. Please. No, 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 no. Please, I defer. <laughs> I apologize. This is a, a amendment that I propose not to modify the city charter in terms of its effect, but to permit the current city charter's intent to be enforced. The current city charter specifies to the effect that this city council can issue general obligation bonds, meaning bonds backed by the full faith and credit of you, the taxpayers, a year plus the amount of general obligation debt that they retired in the prior year. And to borrow more than that amount, which still requires eight votes to authorize, but to borrow more than that amount, they have to go to the people in a referendum and get the public to affirmatively endorse and co-sign additional borrowing. The purpose of that charter amendment was to ensure that no governing body could burden the public with more debt than what they wanted without their active consent. That was back in 1962, and the charter was ratified in 63 by the public. Pretty smart folks, I would say. Maybe Congress should have something like that. But, but and that's the kind of the practice that we went through for up and until the 90s, when we discovered, or someone discovered, as government always tries to find a way to escape fiscal discipline, you know, local governments are no exception, they found out there was a way that the city could go into additional debt without asking the public if they got a third party, the Virginia Beach Development Authority, to issue debt in its name that has no revenues. Well, how would someone lend some issued debt for a body that has no underlying revenues? Well, because the city enters into an agreement, a memorandum of agreement, that says that we guarantee, well, not guarantee, subject to annual appropriation, that you issue this debt, we're going to pay you the principal and interest, we're going to re rebate that to you, and then you, in fact, then pay the debt. Well, the legal distinction, and it's only a legal distinction, is because it's issued by a third party, it's subject to annual appropriation, meaning we don't have to pay it, and they couldn't come back to us and ask us for money. They would just be able to seize the assets for which the debt was used to purchase that they now can borrow, and they have borrowed $600 million since this practice was started back in 1998. Now, you can say it is legal. Correct. Is it the intent of our charter? Is it the covenant that we take our oath for? And are we following the intent of the charter? No, we are not. Now, some people would say, oh, that the city would come to an end because we wouldn't be able to do commercial development without this. But when you look at what we spent money, we are now paying for schools with this kind of money. We are building, we're building roads. We're building recreation uh, centers. We're building lots of things that fundamentally in the past we use general obligation debt for. Now, we also know that we pay about 25 to 50 basis points more for the interest on those bonds than we would general obligation bonds. And the difference of that basis points varies on the spread between the 10-year 10, 10 Treasury note yield and the municipal market. The bigger that spread, the more that basis point differential in the types of debts that's issued. So not only does it cost more, but the fundamental principle is it's a breach of the intent of our charter. So what this amendment says, which would be subject to approval by the voters, I've always believed that any charter amendment should be approved by the voters. but. What we're really wanting people to do is to live by the charter. Uh, would make sure that all debt issued by third parties would be treated just as if it was general obligation bond debt, would be subject to that same provision, and that would have meant that most of the $600 million would have gone to the public in a bond referendum, and you could decide if you wanted a 
Sandler Center or a sportsplex or a new convention center or and when they built schools, you would have a chance to decide what you went into debt for if they're exceeding the charter. And so this amendment is not doing, creating any new authority. It's just giving the rights that our charter vested in the public when the General Assembly approved it, and it closes a loophole that allows this body to circumvent getting the public's ratification and active consent when they issue debt in excess of the charter limits. Any further discussion? Yeah. Mr. Dyer. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a couple items on here that are very important and really change a lot of the fundamental ways that we are going to seek to run government in the city of Virginia Beach. You know, this is one of them, and, uh, you know, the vote on the district voting is another one. And my only concern is that bringing this forward, where was the, you know, where was the discussion and understanding and, you know, just trying to educate the public and ourselves on, you know, some of the revocations. You know, there's a saying, law of unintended consequences is out there. And so I would respectfully recommend that, you know, we have a discussion on this rather than vote on it today. And, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, we did a, you know, my class did a study on district voting. And I've been a proponent of district voting for a while. But what came out of that class was there are positives and negatives to almost every different type of voting, as Mr. McCullough even pointed out. Is this necessarily the best vehicle to take us where we're going to go? So I'm not saying discount, you know, the intent of what's going on with these two major items. But I would just say, would it be in our best interest to delay discuss and, you know, figure out what the ramifications are of this. You know, we're talking about major changes the way we, we do government. You know, I just think it's worth a little bit more time and attention. Do you want to substitute? Any further discussion? I'm sorry, what did you say? I'm sorry. No. I'd like to make a substitute motion. All right. I'd like to um, uh, remove this from our legislative package. Second. Motion's been made, made to Amanda. Can to, you clear the to, to remove this from you can go ahead and change motion it. is made to remove this from our legislative package don't oh. since um since i seconded don't we have to vote on oh well you're no. making a substitute She's making i apologize substitute yeah motion. which we have, Understood. have more discussion which is great all right <laughs> substitute motion is on the floor any just further discussion on yes, the substitute motion yes mr Long. i think it's i hope the public is watching because what i'm really saying is that they don't this body what this vote will tell doesn't want to live under the discipline and under the financial commitment. When we take an oath of office, it isn't just to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Commonwealth. It's also our city charter. And what they're really saying is that, you know, it's okay to have a loophole and it's okay not to follow the intent. I'm sure that's what we all teach our children. You know, don't do it, but don't follow, know what the intent is. I'm sure many people in the military know about commander's intent. What is the intent of that charter? And this is what this really tells you is they don't respect the rights of the voters vested in them in the charter. And they would rather continue the practice that we have today where they can go out and borrow money without your consent on six votes, not even eight, because they know better than you the people who have to pay it. And that's the message of that substitute motion. Do take note. Yes, Ms. Henley. Uh, I don't believe that's the uh, intent of this motion at all. I think the, the fact that this came into our proposed package after we had had all of the discussions and after we had had the public hearings and we have not had the opportunity to discuss this with the public uh, is the reason I don't think we should do it at this point because we haven't had any discussion about how it would change the way we are doing things. It may very well be that we do want to change at some point, but at this point, we just haven't had that discussion with the public. What would it mean as far as our ability to build the schools and so forth? And I, I think it's it's just that this has come too late in the process. Mr. Earn. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, to kind of piggyback what Barbara's saying, I mean, you know, part of the discussion that hasn't occurred here is that this ability as uh, our, our okay. ability to do this has given us the opportunity to refinance current debt that we have uh, on, a, on a regular basis. I mean, certainly if Patty Phillips were here, she would 
uh, probably be able to quantify the vast amount of money it is that we've been saved, able to save by actually timing the issuance of debt and the issuance of uh, reissuing debt. Uh, and so, to Barbara's point, there has been none of that in terms of discussion to put this on at the 11th hour on our legislative agenda. And for that reason, I'm, I'm happy to support your motion there. Yes, sir. Well, on November 6th, we'll all have a chance to be heard. It's all right. Political showboat. Any further discussion? Exactly. If not, uh, the vote, so the vote is, is to the remove. vote the is to remove the to the vote is on the substitute motion, which is to remove uh, this item from this legislative agenda. By a vote of eight to two, you have approved the substitute motion to remove item J220 um, regarding the issuance of debt from the legislative package. All right, the next item is uh, item 21, which is single member district voting uh, for the seven district representative. Mr. Mayor? Yes. If I may make discussion or make a comment before I make a motion. I want, I introduced this and, and Councilman Moss was um, agreed to co-sponsor with me, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the history and why I decided to submit this to our legislative packet. And it kind of starts back a little further than just the city of Virginia Beach. When the U.S. Constitution was formed, it didn't give direction to any level of government how voting should take place, and therefore an at-large system defaulted. And what happened, even at the congressional level, was that enormous groups of people were left <laughs> unrepresented. And by practice, by 1842, only six states of the 28 that were in existence at that time were continued to practice an at-large voting system. And eventually, Congress decided to go out and ban an at-large system at that level. And over the period of time between 1842 and 1965, uh, the ban was enacted and removed and enacted and removed. But by 1965, the Roding Voting Rights Act Amendment was passed, and the ban was made permanent. And as a result, almost all states at that time removed the at-large system, not only on the congressional level, but at the uh, state level as well. And that, of course, trickled down to local elections. Fast forward to after the Civil War, it became a popular and common tool to create an at-large election system at the municipal level because there was no state or federal direction as to whether they could or couldn't do that to create at-large voting races for the strict intent of prohibiting minority or ethnic majority rule. Interesting, interestingly enough, as I did research on the subject, it wasn't specifically against African Americans, but actually national groups like French, Greeks, Irish, Polish, Jewish, Syrians, Lithuanians, uh, Armenians, but of course at that time most certainly African Americans. Saying all that, I think it's very important that we also notate in 1989, Norfolk was forced to remove their at-large voting system because it didn't pass the sniff test, if you will. And basically, the Norfolk case in Collins versus the city of Norfolk, they were trying to decide whether the political processes are equal and open. And I feel like we are facing the same challenge and have been facing the same challenge. And I wonder why we didn't address this in 1989 when a city so close to us addressed it. That said, hearing the people that were able to come and speak tonight and some of the feedback, I would be willing to withdraw not only this amendment, but my term limit amendment as well. Um, with a good faith agreement that we would be willing to add this as a referendum item to the next election cycle. And if I need to get with you to draft that for a different vote on the next voting meeting. Um, but I don't think citizens should have to petition to have this item voted on in a referendum. I think we as a body can make that decision for ourselves. And if we're in agreement to do that um, and add that as a referendum item to whether or not the city of Virginia Beach wants ward voting or a hybrid of that, then um, I would withdraw both of those. So I, I think I need to make a substitute motion to withdraw. Is that correct? No. There's no motion at all. There's no motion well, at all on the table. Well, I would need to make a motion to withdraw. Is that correct, Mark? Well, uh, there will need to be a, a motion to deal with it. You would make, 
you, I, I understand your motion to be to not include it in this package. Right, right. Is that you correct? Need to make a motion to, to remove to it from the addition. package. From the well, I, I said a, a good faith agreement. Yeah. I mean, I, I need to. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mr. Uh, Wood first. Was well, there a second yet to the motion that's made? What's I, the motion I, on the table? I just want to know what the motion is. There is, one. There is no, motion. no motion. Okay, there I just want to make sure I was clear when it all ended. I, I, would, <laughs> I would agree with, with what Rosemary said because if any of this stuff was going to be in a referendum, it would need to be in an election where the, the largest percentage of the people turned out, which would be a presidential election. So. You're saying you weren't on the next election, which would be an odd year election, which if my delegate's unopposed and somebody else's delegate's unopposed, you're not going to have a very big turnout. So, I mean, I, I, I don't think that that's, that that's something that, that you would want to do in an odd year election. Likewise, I don't know that there's any way that we could bind the council, the future council, because it's going to be new after January 1st anyway. It's a different council then. so. I don't know. I, th I think it needs to kind of stand on its own one way or the other, either go forward or not, and then work on the work on the referendum. I'm not saying the referendum is a bad idea or a good idea. I'm just saying I, I think realistically it just needs to be one or the other. Well, I'd, I'd like to enter in on this one because I, I like what Jessica said, to be honest with you. I think the, the idea of letting the public decide whether or not they want to do this particular thing is uh, by referendum is the better way to go rather than us make that decision uh, unilaterally so I if uh, I will say this to you Jessica if uh, you make the motion to remove it from the legislative agenda and it passes I will support putting it on a referendum I would I think Jim is right it would probably be better in the year when we have the most number of voters coming out. But uh, I will support that. Your, and this support. would also give us the opportunity for the civic engagement, the education, to find out best practices. You know, when you know what works in other municipalities and what really doesn't work. I'm, I'm not opposed to any further discussion. I think. I think what. My concern is, is that we need to have a call to action that we are going to take steps in that direction. I think the community is concerned, and I don't think that that's just, you know, categorized just to a minority community. I mean, especially considering after what we learned today in our workshop, there's, there's a big concern with how we do our election cycles. And I think um, perhaps, you know, I, I don't disagree, Jim, that we should make this the, be the biggest voting turnout. I think that's that's a good comment. Um, I just feel like we need to indicate to the public that we are going to do something to start this conversation. And I really, I just have a lot of heartache with the petitions and, and people trying to, to take their time aside when this is an issue I feel like should have been addressed um, a long time ago, frankly. So, uh, you know, I, I will go ahead and withdraw both of them. I'll make a motion to withdraw. Um, and then hopefully uh, uh, we can further this conversation. I'll second that, but I'd like to so the, comment. The motion is withdraw yeah. Yeah. 21 and 22. Yeah. What? Well, it has been addressed in the past with other referendums. So it's, Not it's, since 1996. Both so, it's gone well, both ways, like light but, rail. But, it has, but you said it hasn't been addressed, and it has. But, well, it has, and I think there's the question of how many times do we keep putting the same question on, and you know we can put the light rail back on. As too, many times saying. as the public demands it, because that's who we work for. Okay, and but you're saying every question can be put on as many times as the public demands, not just this one. Yeah, exactly. Okay, just so we're. I'm, I'm willing to have that engagement anytime. Okay, I'm, on any question. On any question. Okay. All right, we have. That's what elections are for. We have a motion on the floor to remove it. Is that correct, Jessica? That's correct. The no, interim no, limits. Twenty-one and twenty-two. Twenty-one and twenty-two. Twenty-one and twenty-two. Yes. From the legislative agenda. Can I have a, a point by Mr. Smith? Yes, please. There w I just would hope that, because I asked for it myself, and I know Amanda, the city clerk, I got, there was the study that was done. There was actually a council commission on this whole topic. I think it was 1992, sticks in my mind. But it would probably be a good idea to, I got a copy of it. I know many of you probably haven't read that. But to provide all the members a copy and also post it on our 
the city council webpage so people who want to go and pull that down can see the extensive Don Clark was our lawyer at the time. I remember Mr. Clark, but he was on there. Al Balco was on there. That was the first time that a district council member won his district but lost his seat. That kind of spewed, that kind of motivated that study. But if she would put that on there, I think that would be a great starter because there was a lot of research done. All right, the vote is open. By a vote of 10 to 0, you have approved the motion to remove J21 and 22, the uh, voting district representative, and the term limits. All right. And the last one is item 23, which is to establish the Hurricane and Flooding Risk Reduction and Bond Rating Protection Act of 2019. And I believe uh, Ms. Abbott sponsored that. Do you want to comment? I mean, I, th I, I think that the, the item stands for itself, but I think it's important that we uh, ask that this be reintroduced. Yes, Ms. Henley. Well, I, I think that I would like to have a briefing on just what is encompassed in this, because I was a little concerned about uh, appointing an authority for the state that would then make recommendations and decisions, and I just really hate to see the localities lose the the weight of what a locality thinks as far as what it needs to do uh, to address the flooding in our areas. I mean, the localities at this point have done all the heavy lifting, and I just want to make sure that we don't have a state authority appointed by the governor or whomever uh, that we have no opportunity then to, you know, that would overweigh what the localities are doing. So I just haven't, I just don't understand what this would do. And even if we do have the briefing and decide this is something that might be a good idea, I really think it would be better coming from the region and maybe be on the HRPDC legislative agenda because I think it's more than just the one city that would want to do this. So it's just that I don't understand what this legislation would do enough. And, and in just reading it, I had a lot of questions about it because I've not heard the discussion from the gentleman who would be introducing it as to what their intent is. Mr. Mathias? Yes, sir. Would you like to give us an explanation? <laughs> This legislation was introduced by Senator Wagner and I believe uh, Delegate Myers in the Correct. last session. Yes. And um, it would basically uh, try to get the Commonwealth to become uh, more of a participant in flood mitigation and response to recurrent flooding and large storm events than it is right now, which um, be fair is they're not really responsive uh, ahead of time. We do have uh, Delegate Stolle's recurrent flooding commission that uh, Mr. Wood is on, uh, and they've been doing quite a bit of research over the years. Uh, we did, uh, through the work of the, this council, have created the special assistant to the governor on recurrent flooding. Um, a retired Navy Admiral has been appointed to that position. And so the Commonwealth is taking a more active role. Uh, but this would be helpful in having the Commonwealth, for instance, become a sponsor of major core projects. Uh, right now, the core, the state, to my knowledge, has never been a sponsor of a core project uh, within Virginia, um, uh, like the Hurricane Protection Project at the oceanfront. Uh, the Richmond seawall or uh, storm wall, flood wall, or any other major projects like in Norfolk. And it's been left up to the localities to come up with the mostly 35% uh, match money with the federal 65%. Um, so this would establish this commission uh, that's um, to uh, address Ms. Henley's concerns is a little bit nebulous. Uh, and we they, they do have quite a bit of wording down here with some specificity. But obviously, the, uh, the, the, where the rubber hits the road is where you find out what the real impact is. Uh, and then they'd have to report, the governor have to report back. And then Jay Lark would be involved. And they want to model it after the uh, Louisiana Legislative's physical office uh, efforts uh, on how their efforts uh, work on 
uh, a situation like this and legislation like this. Um, I don't believe North Carolina or Maryland uh, have any uh, authorities like this. I believe Florida, the state of Florida does. Um, and then Louisiana, I think Alabama, because of uh, the hurricanes they've had in the past. So there's some other models uh, elsewhere in the country that we could look at. Uh, but the legislation, again, is uh, fairly lengthy, fairly specific. Uh, Senator Wagner and I felt very strongly about it. He have actually had it introduced after the session to start it, had to get unanimous consent. And it died in the money committees, uh, both the Senate Finance and the House Appropriations Committee, uh, because they just refused to put any money into this effort. Um, because I think they, perhaps appropriately, but not rightly, see it as a uh, opportunity for the Commonwealth to spend quite a bit of money. Because this is a serious issue. I mean, we have uh, everybody east of the fall line is looking at flooding issues. Arlington and Alexandria have had flooding in recent years from Potomac River. Uh, but you have areas up in the western part of the state, uh, Roanoke, Danville recently, just last week, had tremendous flooding. Uh, and the Commonwealth didn't has uh, doesn't have any uh, real opportunity or mechanism by which you could go in and assist uh, make plans for preventing future flooding like that and it is going to come uh, with uh, climate change and things like that we're going to have more uh, large rainfall events um, if Tom Leahy was here he'd say the hundred year event is now the 10 year event uh, Tom's told me that very often and I know y'all have heard that same message from him. so what used to be a hundred year event or a two or three lifetime event is now something we can expect every 10 years so this is certainly an area that needs to be addressed uh, this legislation I think would be a, a start um, because um, we could probably get somebody from legislative services to come down and uh, make a more informed uh, presentation than I'm making right now, or perhaps even Senator Wagner, um, although it, it would be hard to do between now and the, uh, with the holidays and so forth. But I'm sure we could get somebody from legislative services to come down and express what the interest is, or perhaps even Delegate Myers could make a presentation. Well, since yes. I started this, love to have their money. <laughs> you know, we've gone pretty far, and we're about ready to make some decisions yep. and decide that we want to do some things. I don't want to do anything now that's going to say, whoops, wait a minute, we've got to wait until the state says that, you know, like the smart scale rating on our roads. You know, we might have a whole different idea of what should be our top priority, but we have to go by this, whatever the states come up with is rating these roads for smart scale. And I just don't want us to get into something like that that means that we don't have the ability at the local level to work with our citizens and come up with what our citizens want. We've got to say, oh, wait a minute, we've got to go get this authority with the state to approve it. So I don't want to get into a mess like that. I, I think, uh, Madam Henley or Ms. Henley, uh, we're probably in a position to be a leader in this, uh, just like the city of Norfolk and the region. Uh, you know, it was through uh, uh, Mayor Sussman's efforts that the region established their program to look at recurrent flooding and uh, sea level rise. And uh, we've certainly got a well uh, thought out plan within the region. Nobody has a better plan under design than what we have right now, looking at uh, through y'all's leadership, looking at the various drainages and things like that. So we're going to have, I think, very shortly by the end of the year, or soon after the first of the year, a very detailed plan. And, and some of the things we're looking at is making sure that the Navy, you know, Oceana 6,000 acres sits in the middle of one of the drainages, goes to the south, goes to the east. Um, but Dam Neck is, is very much impacted by recurrent uh, flooding. And so we're going to have to make sure that the Navy's involved in all this too. So it's, it's the state, uh, it's the uh, Navy, it's the other military uh, uh, entities. Uh, and, and we're working, I think, really hard uh, with y'all's leadership to uh, get into a good position. Well, I know, you know, we have this subcommittee from HRPDC now, yes, the Resiliency Subcommittee. And at next week's session, we're supposed to be talking about what items should maybe be in the legislative package for the PDC. And I really think this should be a discussion, you know, of that committee so that, you know, it can be a regional thing because I really think we all are in this, in this Hampton Roads region, especially together, and we need to be working together and all understand what we're doing. So. I know uh, Councilmember McClellan uh, from yes. Norfolk is a very Mr. big Chairman. supporter uh, of this and, and very informed and very uh, involved in this. Uh, 
and I think that might be a good place to have it come forward. Now, whether you all want to just leave it for the region to propose or, or have it part of your legislative package, that's certainly you all's decision. It just seems to me that we need to take a leadership role in this issue. As long as we're sure this to is To be honest right with you. And uh, uh, I don't see the harm I don't either. In, mm -hmm. in putting this in our legislative uh, agenda. Uh, and if we can get the state involved and uh, start helping us with money or uh, and unless we ask them they're not going to do it so uh, I frankly I support this so well as long as that's the intent and we if we're not approving a specific piece of legislation that may have wording in there that we're you know, it's just so it's all still negotiable but I'd love to see the state get more involved and if this yeah. is the opportunity I would support it as well when you go back and look at the history of this legislation and one of the things that I know Bob probably knows is it was this, the bond protection part the state was concerned about the amount of bonded debt that the state might be go on their books was a big part of this but I think if any of us think that there's going to be money coming from Washington or other people's money and there isn't going to be conditions attached for people who give you money you know I think we're we're we're, we're being foolish because there's going to be something that goes with that but I agree we always want to maintain our autonomy as a city we don't want to be subordinate to the region either we want to act that but I do think I'm with the mayor this is a we can't bypass an opportunity and then try to working with the senator and the delegates people try to finesse it to the best we can but uh, we always said and everyone on this body has said we can't do it on our own it's going to take federal state and local money and when you get state and federal money there's state and federal strings <laughs> i mean that's just the nature of the beast all right any further discussion yes, yes. oh i'm sorry excuse me i also think it would send a really bad message if we removed it if we removed it i mean what kind of thing would that be saying so that this is not important to us yeah so i think it's important to keep it in there so is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve number 23. Second. I'll second it. Motion's been made and seconded by both uh, Mr. Moss and Ms. Henley. I think it was Dyer. We, yeah, whatever. Have we talked it out, folks? Ms. No. Ms. Okay. Henley, may I have your vote? Thank Just you. vote. By a vote of 10 to 0, you have approved item J23 to include in the legislative package regarding the hurricane and flood risk reduction and bond rating protection. Right. I still think you actually need to vote to approve the ones you separated these from. You separated them, but I don't think you voted to approve items one through. I thought we did. 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 No. I remember voting. Yeah. You, you voted to separate them, but there. I don't. Yeah. I didn't. So First vote was from one to nineteen, with the exceptions of three and ten. But I didn't. I, neither I, and apparently nor the clerk, understood that to approve them. Okay. If if that was the intent. I just wanted to make sure your your your, your record was clear. So, How about the motion being that all items that were affirmatively passed to be approved on the budget be considered a pass and approved as our legislative package? Does that work? The, the I'm fighting all the motions that we made in the affirmative, right? We, we, she knows what those are. Those constitute our legislative package. We voted on each individual yeah. one of them. But you didn't vote on the group. You just voted to separate these from the group for separate consideration, but you never then said we approved the group that we didn't separate out. Are you saying we need to vote on the ones other than? Yes, ma'am. That's what right. I'm suggesting. I make, I'll make a motion. I make a motion that we vote on item ones to items one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty-three. For our legislative package, you've already done 23. We did 23 separate, so. yeah. And we did oh. three and 10 already, right? But you wanted all of them in there together, no, right? You oh, just good lord. Because then you got you to vote for the other ones. Never mind. I, I, I am very sorry, but let me be clear about what I was saying. The motion that I wrote down was the motion to separate items 3, 10, 20, 21, 22, and 23 for separate consideration. That passed 10 to 0. You then took separate votes on items 3, 10, 20, 21, 22, and 23, but you did not vote on the other items that you separated these from. 
You separated them, but you did not vote to approve them, I don't believe. Let's try once again. Let me try once again. <laughs> everything but 23, is that correct? No. 1 through 19. Yeah. With the exception of 3 and 10. Except for the ones that we took out and mm -hmm. separated. I make a motion that we approve items 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 through 19 for our legislative package. Second. What about 22 and 23? We, we voted on the we those, those, were, the, those were separately voted on, and, and so we'll include those. Okay, we'll take Shannon's motion and get this settled. <laughs> <laughs> I already voted. Has everybody voted? Yes. Um, by a vote of 10 to 0, you have approved the motion to approve the items as read by Council Lady Kane to be included in the legislative package. I think, Shannon, you were right from the beginning. We should just vote it on each one separately, and that would have been easier. Can you say that again? <laughs> Shannon was absolutely correct. Women are always smarter. <laughs> she, she, wanted you, she wanted to make sure everybody heard that. That's right. So, you know, the camera's still rolling. I'll write it on note and sign it. All right. <laughs> so we've taken care of uh, the legislative uh, issue. Number now we go to item four, which is uh, resolution regarding the effective date of prospective regulations for a home sharing and short-term rentals. I'm sorry, we have speakers. Oh, yeah, sorry. So the first speaker is Herb Jones. He left. Mr. Jones left. Okay. The second speaker I had signed up is Conrad Agresti. I'm sorry if I messed your last name up. Evening, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the council. My name is uh, Michael Conrad Agresti. I reside at 501 Bushnell Drive in Virginia Beach. My phone number is 757-425-2068. Uh, I rise to oppose the implementation of uh, the delay in this rec the uh, regulations regarding home sharing and short-term rentals. Proposed regulations have not changed appreciably for many months. None of the provisions is onerous. All can be implemented with a minimum of cost or effort. How onerous is, is it to rec renters to use automatic trash, automated trash receptacles, or to install smoke detectors, to post city ordinances, increase insurance liability, to provide a point of contact, it is not. The only justification for delaying implementation can be to roll the short-term rental grandfathering date from 1 July 2018 further to the right, allowing even more short-term rentals into our neighborhoods. Recently, where I live in Croton neighborhood, recently had a short-term rental property that was being, we had squatters in there. And they had also burglarized other homes in the in the neighborhood. Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no justification for such a delay. Unless it's to satisfy a quid pro quo. That would create a very bad optic three weeks before election day. Thank you. That's all the speakers on that item. All right. May I have a motion? I'd like to move to approve. Second. Motion's been made and seconded for approval. Any discussion on the motion? Vote is open. By a vote of 9 to 1 with Ms. Henley voting nay, you have approved the motion for the effective date of um, regulations for home sharing and short-term rentals. All right. Item 8C. 8C, uh, $500,000 in reimbursement from the Federal Emergency Management Agency to the fiscal year 2018-19 Fire Department operating budget, Ray mobilization of the Virginia Task Force 2 Urban Search and Rescue Team for Hurricanes Lane, Olivia, and Florence. We have one speaker, Bill Bailey. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of Council, City Manager, Mr. Stiles. I'm here tonight to uh, 
talk about this appropriation from FEMA for the three hurricanes. Tonight we have FEMA team members who are out in the southeast United States doing search and rescues, and I'm here to talk about their pay tonight. The $500,000 that's being appropriated is not being computed, computed correctly, and as you're aware, I think you had a briefing this afternoon. We went to federal court on October 2nd and are awaiting a federal judge's determination. But I want to make clear in a Reader's Digest version as quickly as I can, this is the federal registry that covers the FEMA team management. It is a, called a 44 CFR Part 208. It tells you how FEMA team members are to be paid. The second thing, this is a City of Virginia Beach pay policy that says when team members are deployed out of Hampton Roads, they will be paid in accordance with the federal registry that determines how FEMA teams are managed. Now, we went to federal court because we were arguing about this issue for the last 10 years in the Virginia Beach Fire Department. I didn't realize at the time that you all could resolve this issue. Quite frankly, when we went to federal court in front of Judge Dumar, the city attorney representing the city of Virginia Beach said, and I quote, so the point is, Your Honor, that the city of Virginia Beach, you ask, and I'll say in this way, your Honor asked the question of Mr. Improvento, that's our attorney, why wouldn't the city just pay them? That's a tough question, because I think we love our firefighters, they do a great service to our community, but the truth is the city leaders and leadership of the city of Virginia Beach has established a pay policy which does not allow the city of Virginia Beach to request greater reimbursement. This change has to come at city council, you all, not in federal court, not in local court from city council. Those are the words of the city attorney representing the city of Virginia Beach in federal court on October 2nd. I don't really care at this point what a federal judge rules because quite honestly, all I need are six of you to give Mr. Hansen direction to pay the FEMA team members in accordance with the 44 CFR 208 that says those individuals, how they're supposed to be compensated. That's all it takes. This doesn't have to go to court, doesn't have to go anywhere else without any real conflict. All it takes is six of you to provide direction because of what the city attorney testified to in federal court, it's on you. And I thank you very much for your time and I look forward to your support for the FEMA team members who are out there serving. Thank you very much. That's all the speakers. All right, may I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Second. Motion has been made. Second for approval. Any further discussion? Vote is open. By a vote of 10 to 0, you have approved the, the ordinance to appropriate the funds. All right. Now we'll go to see. Do we have any planning items? No. no. All right. And we didn't <coughs> do any appointments, so are there. Is there any unfinished business? Any new business? You made it easy for me. The meeting's adjourned. I'm sure that we're giving up.